The main reason we started the AFP was probably two or three, you know, significant moments in the in the history of the sport. One was to have a single voice to help the athletes get into the Olympics, to create transparency for athletes to understand how do they get to the invited games, in particular X Games, and finally to create a cohesion amongst uh, you know a ranking system so there you know we can determine who was the best in the world. Uh, at, at the time, there was just a bunch of events, and typically you would just say, well, if this athlete won those events, then they must be the best. But there were there were so many one-off events, and none of them really connected. So we were able to put the pieces together and, and create a world ranking that really helped determine you know who was the best. And uh, you know, Gerard always said it best. You know, when an athlete's on an airplane, oh, what do you do? I'm a skier. Oh, you know, what does that mean? Well, I've won this and that. But now they can be on a plane next to a stranger and say, oh, I'm, I'm the world champion. And, you know, people get that. The sport in 2002 um, had Olympic hopes uh, following the success of, of the snowboarders. Um, and there were rumors flying around. At the, at the time, I was the publisher of Free Skier Magazine, and there were rumors about skiing, half pipe being included in the Olympics in 2006. Uh, and we found those, so we did an, a, sort of an investigative uh, story on whether or not this was true. And what we found very quickly was that it was not even close to true. Uh, the half pipe for the skiers was not included in even, uh, there wasn't even a twinkle in anyone's eye about it. So that at the time, that was really important to us to, to have recognition um, alongside our, our friends in snowboarding at the Olympics, so we sort of went on a bit of a quest to to get half pipe into the Olympics, um, and worked with various agencies. We worked with uh, SIA. We worked with actually a, a lobbyist in, in Washington. Uh, this was pre AFP, um, and met with a bunch of the athletes: uh, Tanner Hall, Greta, Eliason, uh, John Sim, Simon Dumont, uh, Sarah Burke, and sort of talked about what you know, the state of the sport so that we could put a best foot forward to the powers that be at the time. Um, and we're fairly organized about it. So we went through all of these these uh, motions and essentially at, at the time um, the, the folks who we were meeting with, the federations and the national governing body sort of said that's cute and took our information and threw it in a drawer and uh, didn't really act on it at all. So that gave us a, it was sort of a reality check, um, and this would have been, you know, shortly after 2006, that, that we really needed to organize from the inside, not worry so much about the Olympics as a whole, but just get our shit together as a sport. Um, and that was sort of, that was the history that, that led to uh, the founders getting together and saying, what can we do to organize? What can we do to create uh, some consistency and to create a, a uniform story um, from the inside out at, with free skiing and, and stop worrying about so much the Olympics and start worrying about our own house? Mostly the AFP was fa uh, founded as a means of unifying the free skiing world and, uh, and giving a voice to the athletes as a, as a whole instead of a bunch of segmented parts. Well, I, the long-term goals of the AFP uh, would be to continue to be uh, the, the glue in the co competitive side of skiing uh, for the athletes. And when I say glue, I mean the thing that, that uh, puts the, the events and the sanctioning and the athlete opinions and um, you know, all of those, those elements into a, into a place where we can have an open discussion and what comes out the other side is, is good for the sport, is good for uh, the athletes um, and ultimately it continues to evolve uh, with the sport itself um, so that it's that we never get stuck into a place where we're stagnant and not non-creative um, as a sport I think that's a long-term goal is to to continue to represent the vision of the athletes and in evolve with the sport which it's going to do it's going to change it's going to continue to change what is cool now will not be what's what's cool in, in five years and um, 
we don't want it to turn into diving or, or even aerials for that matter. We, we want it to be free. Um, so I think that that's really at the core is to have an organized um, body that is, is credible and is respected by the community and has the best interests of the community in mind so that, that we can, um, you know, we can sort of protect our sport to a certain degree. We can be the stewards of, of the creativity within free skiing. The AFP approach has been very much to facilitate, to partner, and to grow. Um, the AFP is not here to try to split hairs, to split, you know, to point fingers or anything like that. It, it's strictly to formulate and collect all opinions, and then hopefully communicate all opinions and allow the athletes to make the, mo the best decisions, and then we implement those decisions. And I think up until this point in time, we've been able to do that almost 100%. And and I hope that we can continue to do that as we continue to grow, because that's you know from the day one this was this was an organization for the athletes, and it, it always will be in my mind. We love skiing. I mean, that is the the driving force behind this. Um, I. I'll say it unabashedly, like the founders have at this point have have only invested in the AFP. None of us have ever made a single dollar in in now, you know, what's the year, 2013? So in, in six years, uh, you know, our motivation is to help the sport and, and because we love the sport, because it's a huge part of our life and, you know, hopefully it'll be a huge part of our kids' lives. And um, that, that's the motivation behind the AFP is to, to, to help the sport in one way or another.